Hey, it's Mike, and today I'm in Juliet, Illinois, and we're checking out the old ironworks park here. It was an old steel mill that was abandoned back in the early 1900s. It was open from the 1800s, mid 1800s, late 1800s, something like that. And then it closed down and stayed here abandoned for years. And in 1991, and in 1991, the Parks Department actually took it over and made it into a walking trail. So let's check it out. So as you can see off the trail here, there's actually foundation of a building that was once here. And there's actually some placards along the walk that would tell us more about the old ironworks that was here at one point. Now, according to this first placard here, it's talking about how immigration played a big part in bringing people here for a job for one thing. And plus, Chicago was recovering from the Chicago fire and it even says down here that the Juliet Works site is often considered the birthplace of the industrial safety movement. So that is pretty cool. It's hard to imagine what had stood here at one point. I mean, I wish the sign had said, hey, this building was here, but that's okay. We can kind of use our imagination to kind of figure out what was here. Now you see this the park is actually covered with these kind of sites with all these rubble and there are signs at the beginning and throughout the walk here that would say you know, st stay off of this stuff it's not safe but the walking path we are on is perfectly fine now we got another placard here that says high raises high risk and hard work and this talks about you know the high risk jobs that people were required to do with manual labor to make the steel and you can see right here where a worker's shoe was burned with a hole in the toe and so now we continue on our walk to find more sites and more placards well that didn't take long at all from the previous stop like i said i'm not sure what these were i'm thinking these might have been those towers we saw in that picture just because of the round base um, but look at that there's a placard right there so let's check it out so this placard actually talks about the language barrier here at the old mill basically it sounds like less than half the iron plant workers spoke English so they had to come out of a way to make safety first as the sign says there in the photo and they actually started making signs in different languages warning people of the different you know dangers that they could be in just by working here and during a time period too this it says here that within 27 years the plant opened the safety first movement was started most because people were getting injured and killed on the job but also since it was a well paying job people were just lining up the door to just work as I'm walking here, I'm not sure if you can hear it or not, but you can hear, I think, train cars being loaded. You can hear the braking, because I think they're on the other side of this brush here, of these tree lines. In fact, over there is actually another main line going into downtown Juliet. And earlier, when I was walking through here, I actually saw the Amtrak go by, going down to St. Louis or Springfield. Now, this is a ruinous kind of building across the way there where the people are at. I'm not sure exactly what that was. At first, I thought maybe it was part of a bridge because, you know, the way it's designed. But on the way back, we'll take a peek inside because you can actually see more of what's inside the area when we go by. All right. So coming up here, you're never going to guess what it is. But I'll give you a hint. It's a placard. All right. So like I said, here is another placard. Now this one explains how the neighborhoods were set up. Basically, it's saying how the the Western Europeans joined unions. They lived in neighborhoods away from the noise and dirt of the mill and had higher paying jobs. While the Eastern and Southern Europeans with meager English skills that were afraid to join the union, they lived close to the mill and had lower paying jobs. All right, so I think these are where those towers were in that picture. But because there's like these wells, I guess you can call them, and there's like four in the front, and I'm thinking there's 
looks like maybe another four in the back so eight total so I'm not 100% sure what these things are I'm thinking that's where they make the steel I don't know this stuff like I said they could be just holes on the ground for all I know for tower for base towers or towers of the base but up here there's a ramp that we're not going up but we will go up there eventually because there's actually, there's actually this wraps around which is kind of cool and like I said there's signs like this that say you know stay on the path keep out that's why we're staying on this little sidewalk and there's little guardrails and little areas you can stop off and read signs but make sure you're out here stay off you know it's not worth getting hurt and then so there's that ramp here I'm guessing this went from these wells over here I'm guessing somebody had to pull a cart or push a cart up this ramp here and into whatever building this was at one point or down that ramp I, I'm, I'm just guessing and then these little I want to say notches in the ground I, like I said I don't know what this stuff is it is so tempting to walk over and look down that hole but unfortunately you know it's instead this guardrail here and the sign does say stay off so we're not going over there but it would be kind of cool to go look and say hello and hopefully no one says hello back I mean if, if, if they do I mean I, I don't know what I would do I mean it could be a ghost it could be a person that had fallen down there I don't know but I don't know if I want to take that risk so in a minute here we're going to go up those stairs here and that was that area where that ramp had gone up to and we can check this out as I walk up the stairs you can see where they shifted so even the site is still shifting over time so that's why I say hey, stay off would you look at that a big giant hole in the ground and oh my god what is this is this a placard what's this one talking about uh oh this one talks about technology and it talks about the mechanic mechanization how you know over time things improved to prevent more deaths for one thing but also of course with technology become you know less workers needed and they're saying a furnace at this location produced at least 400 tons of iron a day and that was up from 50 tons per day when the plant opened in the 1870s just because of modernization as the time went on In fact, even during World War II, many women were employed here as well. And look at that, another big giant hole in the ground. I said, and there's another one here too. I think this one more tunnels. So they can walk between each the hole, so I guess. You can kind of see down there. I kind of, I kind of wonder if this place is haunted. I should bring my ghost hunting stuff here someday I'm sure there's gotta be something here you know because of all the people that died while working here so as the saying goes when you work hard you play hard and this talks about the leisure time in the little spare time that the workers had you know by going to church parks saloons getting some entertainment going by you know the, the local Nickelodeon which was theater, movie theaters before the movie theaters. And they actually had a little club too in the 1800s. It was like, I know Roosevelt came here in 1900 and the President Roosevelt. And so I wonder if he was one of those celebrity lectures that they had at the club. I, I wouldn't doubt it. And look at that, another giant hole in the ground. And I said, these must be tunnels that ran someplace either with the iron itself, you know, the molten iron, or, you know, people walking. I they said, I don't know. It makes sense, though, to walk under it or have it flowing under you. Because this looks like a walkway here. I feel like a tour guy here. I should be like, 
holding a little flag that says, okay, everyone, follow me, let's go. So I didn't notice before, but there's a sidewalk here that goes in front of the area where it's at. And maybe we can see more into these holes in the ground. Look at that. And the reason why it's still here is because it's too costly to tear it all out. And it's best just let it sit and rot away and put signs up saying, you know, stay off. But look at all those bricks and, you know, mortar and all that just to keep this place up and running. And this place was huge at one point. So, all right, everyone, follow me. Let's continue on. So, as you look on your left here, as we go by, you can see more rubbles and hear a train. I'm trying to record here. I mean, do you really need to be that loud? How rude. As I was saying, if you look on your left here, as we go by, you can see more rubble from the old ironworks here that was here in Joliet, Illinois back from 1880 to about early 1930 or so. Like I said, there it is, more of the rubble. And when we're talking about rubble, we're not talking about, you know, Barney rubble here, but we're talking about rubble from the buildings. And it looks like the walkway goes up over there too. I can see a little fence. I mean, I kind of wish, you know, like I said, that they had put signs saying this building was this building, this is what this building did. I mean, it's, it is nice to have the, the signs we have that explain, you know, the daily life of the steel worker, but to know like which area was what, we kind of interesting too. And like I said, there's more rubble over here as well. I mean, look at all that. It's amazing. I mean, I, I'm sure, you know, when they closed up shop and tore down stuff all those years ago, I'm sure they never thought, oh, people will be here one day walking through here and, you know, saying, you know, what a mess this is, or this is pretty cool, or climbing all over the place. I mean, it would blow their minds knowing that this, you know, was still here. All right, so this last placard, or second to last placard, I'm guessing, because I can see one down there, talks about the City of Steel here in Joliet, Illinois. And it says, with the Great Depression, that closed most of the iron-making plant. But once World War II happened, the plant reopened up and, you know, continued on for at least a little bit, a little bit till at least a little bit longer. And there's more of that same rubble that we saw earlier. Just a different angle of it. You hear the trains in the background too, I'm sure. Alright, so the Amtrak going downtown Chicago has went by again. On to Union Station, next! Because after they after leave Juliet, that's the next stop. Alright, here it is. This is the last of the placards and this one says a forging a city of steel this is the Joliet Ironworks historic site geez I guess I should start this on this side first apparently the, the limestone quarries that were here as well as this ironworks plant these two industries gave the city of Joliet nickname the city of steel and stone and today, only ruins of the once bustling iron mill remain. And then there's some photos there as well. And these photographs came from the Juliet Area Historical Museum, which is a pretty cool museum to check out too. All right, there it is. There's the old Juliet prison, you know, where the Blues Brothers was filmed, as well as Prison Break. And I'd never seen it from this angle before, so that is pretty cool. I was almost about to leave and I totally forgot about this. I said, you know, the way back, we'll show you inside of this thing. So I can show you from here at least. 
but you can see it's, it's like a room or something I'm kind of building that was here at one point and you see the hole in the ground there it looks like some kind of pipe or something like that laid on there at one point I'm just guessing but there you go that's what's inside this big huge building so I want to thank you for watching be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later on down the road